Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. Uh, now, Nico. Uh, who is a PhD candidate in the Department of Engineering Systems and Services at the Faculty of Technology, Policy and Management of Delft University of Technology. She holds a master's degree in Environment and Society at Radboud University and an undergraduate degree with honors in Political Science and Sociology from the University of Toronto. Her research interests include digital security in critical infrastructures, uh, transition governance and quantum safe transition. Yes. Hi, uh, Juan. Uh, I'm in uh, my third year at uh, Delft University of Technology. Um, thank you for having me to speak at the consortium. Um, I'm afraid I'm disappointing, but um, I could promise you that this is also still interesting. <laughs> so the title is Leading the Quantum Safe Transition, a Growth Stage Approach. I'll be using a Mentimeter for the presentation, so it would also be nice if you could also prepare. Um, yeah, go to the Mentimeter.com and then you could use the code uh, at the top because I, I will have a bit of interactive session. So a uh, table of contents for today is I would like to communicate the goal of the session, uh, briefly go uh, talk about the Hapkido project that I'm part of and the res uh, results of my research thus far and interaction using Mentimeter to see the transition leadership and also end with the future outlook. So the goal of the session is to share research finding on the growth model, which is part of my PhD research, um, and then to identify pathways uh, that are sequential actions and to discuss transition uh, leadership that actually a lot of us uh, were discussing for the before uh, our lunch break. So I'm part of uh, Hapkido is hybrid approach for quantum safe public key infrastructure development for organizations. Um, these are um, our research partners and I'm part of TU Delft. So for the research deliverables, um, by the end of this year, there were some uh, development of a stages of a growth model. And the stages of a growth model is very conceptual. So it's giving a bit of guidance for organizations to move from one stage to the next, eventually achieving the quantum safe environment. And we, uh, from the project, we do aim to uh, develop an online assessment tool so that uh, organizations can assess the stage they're in and what they may need to move forward to become quantum safe. And hopefully by 2025, quarter three, I finish my PhD, <laughs> and then there's also a development of a transition roadmap. Um, if you could also look at the phone for the Mentimeter uh, to uh, zoom in for the slides. Um, so basically, it started out with a question of ident identifying the quantum safe transition challenges. I started with the identifying these challenges through literature. And from that, I validated empirically through um, research uh, interviews with experts and practitioners to see if the quantum state transition challenges in practice were uh, relevant with the literature that was being discussed. Uh, we focus more in terms of institutional and organizational um, view of the quantum state transition because we see this quantum state transition as a social technical challenges. So from then, what we did was we identified these 24 challenges from the literature, and then got to 15 uh, challenges that were validated through uh, the interviews. Um, and we conducted workshops with uh, different organizations in the government and the banking sectors um, to identify the driving and dependency power of these transition challenges. So through this, we categorized how some challenges were more prioritized than others, and how some challenges have a higher driving power or dependency power. So from this, we were able to challenges that organizations were struggling with. And from that, uh, gave us a pre-version 
a work in progress version of uh, because we started from looking at the challenges of quantum state transition we looked at okay what are the categories that may be addressing these challenges so uh, for instance it could have been collaboration policy and regulation governance uh, having quantum state solution standards within the ecosystem or hybrid uh, quantum state solutions. So these were some of the key categories that appear through the research. Um, this is just a little bit part of the uh, growth model, but uh, say for instance, the, the, at the end, at the bottom, the green is like the different categories. And uh, basically, for instance, at the state, in the category of collaboration, it says dis disengagement. So in this state, it's, the organizations are disengaged, uh, they don't have a communication channel, and they are unaware of their stakeholders within their ecosystem. So, and then we would identify, okay, then what are the necessary steps in order to move to the next step? And you would identify the steps in such as uh, identify your stakeholders, what are the technical interdependencies that are existing in your ecosystem. So we would have this um, different steps of actions that may be necessary for organizations to fulfill. And um, for instance, in uh, quantum state solution standards, with an ecosystem, it has not yet been decided. Of course, there's no availability of actual standards, but it also uh, is, uh, there's an issue of okay, we need to have a selection of uh, quantum state solutions within an ecosystem that they were gonna use, but that has not yet been decided. So there are some challenges that are along the way and by uh, looking at this in stages, we try to find the key actions that may be necessary. So being able to really find, okay, what are some of the necessary uh, quantum state solution standards that may be needed in the ecosystem? Perhaps we have to evaluate our existing infrastructure and see where our vulnerable areas are and what are the, some of the quantum safe solution requirements that may be adopted to the ecosystem you're in. Um, so that also involves some of the key actions which may involve not only uh, evaluating your current existing infrastructure, but it might also mean that there needs to be a setup of testing environment. And, uh, and then of course, uh, that leading to selection of this uh, quantum safe solution that may be used in the ecosystem. So there are some step-by-step -step stages, and um, how we decided is you see the gray boxes. So there are sort of steps that you take and you evaluate your organization, assess it, and then that puts you in a certain state of each category. And what we do is we take the sum of each state of the category, and then we determine the stage you're in. And then you could also assess oh, what are the necessary steps to move forward to become quantum safe. So we have ident uh, identified five stages. So it starts with initiation where you have unknown security, uh, security vulnerable uh, state. And then this moves on to assessment and planning stage and also goes to preparation um, and uh, where it goes to stage four implementation where you have quantum uh, safe security phase, and then moving on to stage five, which is more continuous improvement that is going beyond uh, of your cryptographic security uh, of um, being resilient, but not just for the, um, the topic of quantum threats. So um, these are necessary steps that we took, and perhaps this uh, identifies your organizations in the different stages. I would actually like to know the audience in the room and also online, uh, if you could um, just enter in and s tell me which of the actor you belong to. It would be very helpful to understand the audience. <laughs> I would wait a few more seconds. I heard there's a bit of lag on online to really send this result. So, so we don't have any uh, standardization bodies and sectoral governance. We have government agency, private sector service providers, uh, PKI solution providers, others. Oh, okay. 
We have several others. Uh, for those who answered others, could you, um, could you, uh, well, is it uh, because university, academia? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it's, uh, it's nice to know who's in the audience to really understand the context of our conversation. Um, so uh, before the stages of growth model, there's a known security phase, and then we go like assessment, and then, okay, there's an emerging uh, security preparation phase to resilience phase that we're aiming to go to uh, stage five of the model. Um, we assume that there's, it, this is not going to be a single pathway. There, uh, we, we think there's going to be multiple pathways, and it also depends on the capabilities and knowledge and this uh, basically support that organization has for quantum uh, transition. So there's going to be multiple pathways, and also recognizing these different actors in the transition is quite important for us to see, okay, what are some of the necessary steps, preconditions that some actors may need in order to move up to another stage? So who are the actors that may be leading the transition? And what are some necessary actions that need to be met in, uh, for others to also join the transition? Yes. So I would like to uh, now uh, identify um, or actually talk about the ex expected transition leadership for quantum state transition, and also um, uh, ask you to uh, government should lead in. So I still remember that there were about 26 participants in the previous slide, and we have nine responses. So um, these were some of the um, actions that were Quite considered, considered quite important, uh, but uh, right now what we are aiming to do is really finding the actors uh, that may be setting the conditions for a certain stage, and whether that lies in government or the other actors that may be in the other previous slide. So um, judging by the outcome, of respondents, it seems like the average is 3.7, but the government should lead in the second one, establishing a steering committee and working groups for quantum safe transition. Is there anyone who would like to share uh, or disagree on this? I don't, I don't think so. Well, perhaps on the online? No? Okay, so it's quite clear that uh, the government uh, should be leading this steering committee and working groups. Implementation plan for quantum solution algorithm. It's actually lower than the others. And is there reasons why this might be the case? Coming from the practitioners and experts uh, in the room. Uh, thank you so much for your answer. Yeah, OK. Uh, is there any questions uh, regarding these slides? OK. Then uh, we'll go to another one. This is the uh, last one, I believe. Um, it's actually uh, the first one, developing an ecosystem-wide transition path, so identifying the areas that organizations need to collaborate. It is actually the lowest, um, actually, of all uh, so far. Um, is there uh, any reasoning behind it? No, you don't have to be correct. Just uh, it could be your assumption. Yes. No, the actors uh, would be relevant for the uh, the previous question of asking which of the actor groups you belong to. So those would be the the actors assumed to be involved in the quantitative transition. Somehow the third one, developing policies and regulations that support quantitative solutions, seem very natural, um, but. Regarding selecting quantitative solution validated through testing, is that something the government should be leading this on? And it would be interesting to hear some of the uh, opinion on this. Um, because in my, then who else would might be the, um, in the process? Any ideas or? 
or is it something that we should be clarifying in the near future? Well, um, thank you so much for the answers. Just to uh, give an extra question, are there any other critical actions that government should be uh, taking to stimulate quantum state transition? And this is coming from your professions, professionals and expertise um, in practice. Do you see any critical things that needs to be done? And this is an open uh, answer, so you could just type in your uh, response. Yes, <laughs> clearly uh, that was discussed uh, pre uh, before lunch, extra C center, clear guidelines. In the, in the case of providing trainings, would it this link to more in the technical training? Free beer for early adopters. <laughs> Research funding. <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, I need to do multiple iteration of the growth model. It's uh, currently we have the working progress model, but it needs to be revised a few times. Um, from that, we will translate this growth model into online assessments tools, where it will be available publicly to uh, organizations to use and assess their stage and to um, identify what actions may be needed to move towards quantum safe. Um, so I'm currently conducting workshops at organizations. And uh, it could also be done online. <laughs> and then your expertise and opinions in the field are very valuable. Uh, so please uh, reach out if uh, you're interested. So um, this is me, Dini Kong, and Atiyu Do. Uh, and I included some QR code. Um, if you would like to stay informed about our research, uh, perhaps uh, just stay con connected and uh, also uh, ask uh, to have uh, coordinate some workshops together in the future. So I will leave it on and uh, yeah, you could provide your information. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, to you? No, online? Okay, then, uh, oh, okay, can you please go to the mic? Uh, well, you have asked us a couple of questions about the role of the governments yeah. uh, and the potential leading role in it. Do you yourself have an opinion about these questions that you have asked us? Um, I think uh, I'm in process. Uh, I'm in the process of figuring out um, to what extent do the government should lead, and to uh, what which con what kind of conditions should they provide in order for. Um, the Netherlands as a whole could achieve quantum safe. And this is not just uh, in the public sector, but also in the banking industry or telecom industry. Uh, what are the, some of the things that may be needed in order to be that push? Um, and if you're asking my personal opinion, I think to a certain extent, yes, the government should have to. But um, in detail and what, it's something that I should look into the research and validated. Yes. Thank you. Okay, then if there are no further questions, then uh, please have a thanks for all our three uh, speakers in this session. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.